What's up everyone, Jeremy Gerard from Mythic Customs here with one of my short customizing tutorial videos. On this video, we're gonna talk about painting Legion Builders. So the timing of this video is very, very deliberate because just about a week ago was when Big Bad Toy Store got their gigantic shipment of uh, Mythic Legions figures in. I know a lot of people had pre-ordered those figures, including a number of really cool Legion Builder characters. So there are some really great Mythic Legions Legion Builders that are in the market right now. They're still available for order on Big Bad Toy Store. They're in stock and ready to ship and they provide a wonderful base to create some really, really cool customs with. So I thought that I would look at a couple very specific Legion builders today, ones that are available from Big Bad Toy Store right now, and then we'd go from there to look at some recipes. So first things first, uh, if you're not familiar with the term Legion builder, Mythic Legions has a number of different character types, a number of different figure types within their line. Um, right from the beginning of the line, one of the kinds of figures they produced were called Legion Builders. So the idea behind these figures were they have the same incredible detailing as the other figures in the line. They use all the same body parts. There's just far less paint applications on them. Paint applications are one of the items that really add to the cost of these figures, especially detailed paint applications like you find on Mythic Legions. So by producing figures that are largely one color, it definitely allows them to decrease the cost. As such, that decrease in cost gets passed on to the consumer, and as opposed to these figures costing, say, $35 during a pre-order, they cost around $22. So the idea initially was this would allow fans who want to create large legions, they want to build their legions, create large dioramas and displays, it would allow them uh, a lower cost way to get all those figures. Uh, what it actually did, certainly people that want to army build were able to take advantage of those lower costs, uh, but it also opened the doors for customizers like myself to use these base figures in our creations. And there's a couple benefits to that. Not only are they lower cost base figures, um, but additionally, because they are largely one color, they provide a nice somewhat blank canvas for you to work with. So the one I have right here, this is the Cavern Dwarf Legion Builder. This is one that is actually available right now from Big Bad Toy Store. Um, it's a great, great figure. It's funny when they, when they first introduced this in the Advent of Decay Kickstarter, a lot of people, um, honestly myself included, were a little lukewarm on it. We felt that, you know, there wasn't anything new about it. There, was, there wasn't like really new body parts. It was just a, a standard figure. Um, but having him in hand and having used him in customs, this figure, this base color, it's a wonderful starting point for customs. And we'll look at some of that to death. Now, the first thing that I would suggest you're gonna do when painting Legion Builders is compare them to a regular figure. So this is a figure, another dwarf. This is Bothar Shadowhorn from the very first Mythic Legions wave. Um, you don't have to compare it to this one, obviously. This one's a little harder to find. Pretty much any fully painted figure, compare the two kinds of figures. Compare a Legion Builder with an actual uh, full figure and what you're gonna to start to see is the details and how they're painted on those full figures. So something as simple as like the details on the arm armor here. You can see all of those details that are painted in the armor, uh, you know, around the waist, that armor that they have there. If you look at these figures, they're not painted. So right there, that's what you're gonna be looking to do. A really simple thing that you can do to get started, especially if you're new to customizing and you're using Legion Builders, is just try to paint the Legion Builder the way that you normally would see on a fully painted one of the releases. Um, you look at these figures and they have you know, little you know, rivets and buckles. Start by painting those. Even if you just take a figure like this and you get a little bit of paint and a little brush and you just add that little bit of paint to those details to make it look more like a regular production figure, that's going to be a start. Um, one thing I will suggest is if you are going to start doing that, you will want to take the figure apart. Painting when the figure is fully intact is not advisable. 
Now, there's an article on the, the Mythic Legions, uh, the Source Horseman website, about how to pop these figures apart. If you Google literally popping apart Mythic Legions figures, you will certainly find it. It comes up you know, first in Google. Um, but it will show how to separate these using a little bit of heat. And the reason I suggest you separate them, I'll pull this guy's arm off, and sometimes they're a lot easier. This figure is pretty easy to pop apart. Certain parts are easy, I should say. The arms, the head are pretty easy. Um, separating, like some of the leg parts, are a little harder. You would want heat. But for instance, on the arm, you'll see there's all that detail in the armor, okay? That is detail that is normally painted on a Mythic Legions figure. So that strip of detail is something you're likely going to paint. Well, when you put this back in, the very top of that detail is hidden by the inside socket of the torso armor. So you're going to need to remove it to fully paint all of that. Um, I do also seal those type of parts before I reassemble my figure. So I just use some tester sealer. If you look back on my channel, there's another video about painting, like some painting basics, I think it's called, um, where I talk about the, the tester sealer that I use. Um, a lot of people ask me about painting like joints. I do tend to avoid painting joints just to avoid paint rub. But when you're working with Legion Builders, you don't necessarily need to do that anyway. So looking at that Cavern Dwarf, that is one that I've used for a number of instances. Here's an example of my, my kind of Mythic Legions tribute to Wolverine. And this uses this awesome Vagerine head from Wolf King Customs that I helped bring to life. And I actually painted this to look, to have the colors of, you know, Marvel's Wolverine type character. Uh, fun, fun custom, and that is the base that I use there. Now, there are some different pieces. For instance, the Cavern Dwarf comes with this more metallic loin, that, that armor type loin piece, plate armor, where I use this more you know, scaled type piece here. So some of these things, that's what's great about uh, Legion Builders. As you build out your fodder bins and you have all these different pieces, you can start bringing those fodder pieces into play as well, both on Mythic Legions and other lines. This is also a Cavern Dwarf Legion Builder that I started with. This is my Dwarven Aviator, and this uses a number of pieces from Lord of the Rings. This, this leathery arm, uh, excuse me, leathery coat we have here, the leather tunic he's got, those are all from Toy Biz Lord of the Rings figures, and this particular one uses a head from the Joran Rune Shaper figure that I've repainted as well, but the base body on here is a Cavern Dwarf. Now, those are a little more complex. You don't necessarily need to go that complex to still do some really cool things. The Templar Legion Builder is one that is also available at Big Bad Toy Store right now. Now, the Templar Legion Builder, you look at this, it's so obviously a Templar because of that, that you know, white tunic and that red cross on it. But if you're just looking for more of like a generic knight body and you don't want it to specifically be a Templar, simply by painting that torso chest tunic and that loin piece there, you can have yourself much more of a generic type knight. Now, that's all I did here. I did also add a cape from a Lord of the Rings figure, but realistically, these two pieces were separated. They were spray paint with a blue spray paint. Um, because I wanted full coverage, it was easier for me to spray those than it was to actually use like a brush paint. Um, they are different kinds of plastic. That's one thing to be aware of. The type of plastic used in the tunic and the type of plastic used in these loin pieces, um, so they can be more flexible, are a little different. So they do take paint slightly differently, um, but you really have to be looking for it to notice that slight difference in the sheen ultimately on display. This is going to be a really cool figure and you can have a lot of fun with this. You know, if you want to paint that red or green or any other color, it's as simple as just painting, you know, separating the figure, painting those few pieces, and you can turn one of those Templar builders into much more of a standard knight for your collection. I know a lot of people have bemoaned the fact that some of the other Legion builders, like the Silver Knight Legion builder are you know, from Mythic Legions 1, are nearly impossible to find today. That's a nice alternative for you. Um, skeleton Legion builder. So the Skeleton Legion builder is one that is available. Uh, super cool figure. Even just building out a huge army of skeletons you can have a lot of fun with. 
one of the things you can do with this figure as well as with the Goblin Legion Builder that's also available. Some of the things that you can do with those fun figures is just paint the armor. So the armor itself has no detail, it's like a flat color. And in both cases, they're this dark, almost like gunmetal color. It works wonderfully to do what I call the Urzok paint treatment. And what that is, is I just dry brush on a little like tin. I use a Craftsmont colored tin that I've shown in previous videos, but like a silver will work as well. Dry brush that on just to get some of that scraping and scuffing look that you want. Um, and then I go over it usually with a little tiny bit of brown, especially around like the feet and maybe the knees, the areas that I would imagine getting dirty and muddy. Even just doing something like that is going to add some detail to this character and scuff it up a little bit. You know, I've got a Goblin Legion builder here that that's exactly what was done to him. This figure, all that I did was add a little bit of silver, a little bit of brown paint, and I get that really cool kind of detail that just will help, you know, add some something different to your display, something extra. You know, certainly you can take that same figure and you can do stuff like this. So this one, instead of just adding, you know, across the board, some, some silver scuffing and some dirt and everything, I actually took the time to use like a bronze paint and I painted, you know, some of the legs and some of the details. Look at the actual armor. If you look at the armor on these, you'll see there are areas that are just begging to have some paint. The way that the, the sculpture itself goes, you can just add some little paint there to differentiate it. Like look at the loin. The loin here that has all of these different segments, just by painting that middle segment there really changes the overall color. Same thing on the upper leg over here. I just painted that upper leg piece. It really adds a little bit to the character. Now in this particular one, I've also added some weapons to him as well that came from Lord of the Rings to further differentiate. But that's one of the great things with these is they are a fun blank canvas to use that you can just have some fun, you can try some different things, paint some different parts of the armor. Now certainly you can go more extreme. If you want to add a lot more, here's an example of another Goblin Legion builder that what I actually did was added some shoulder pads from a Skeleton Legion builder, the one I just showed, and then I drilled these little holes and I added some of these spikes that also came with the Goblin Legion Builder. They came with the, uh, the like fully masked helmet. By popping those in, I drilled a little hole, popped those right in. I totally changed the look of this guy's upper armor. The helmet that he's wearing is from a Lord of the Rings figure, and it's just painted and forced right on top of that goblin head. Gave him a couple different axes, and I've got a very cool, different-looking goblin for my display, once again, 90% of this is just a Goblin Legion Builder with some paint added. So you can really have some fun there, do things like that. You can paint the skin different colors. My Frost Goblins, I just posted an article, or a video I should say, last week about how to paint a Frost Goblin. Here's another Frost Goblin for my display. It uses a Goblin Legion Builder body. Yeah, I swapped out the feet, I added some different shoulder pads, but the big thing here is repainting the head. Once again, if I just did that and I followed some of the steps that I covered in my previous video about adding that icy effect, that snowy dry brushing, that's another thing that you could easily do with a Goblin Legion Builder. And then certainly you can go really extreme and add tons of parts. This started as a Skeleton Legion Builder. This Mongolian kind of looking skeleton archer uses parts from a bunch of different figures. It's got this fur cape that came from, I believe, a Cassia figure. It's got, you know, a different sword that came from a Grisha. It's got this helmet that is from, you know, my action figure customs. It's got all of these weapons from uh, Lord of the Rings figures. It's got this skirt from Lord of the Rings and it's got all this blue paint added to really change the look of the base figure. There's a lot of work that goes into this, but once again, that work all started right here with a Legion Builder. So these are wonderful base figures to use, wonderful base figures 
to start playing around with because once again they are lower cost now if you do get them on big bad toy store i mentioned they were 22 dollars. that's if you typically buy them during like a pre-order period um, big bad toy store sells them for 40 dollars, which is certainly more expensive than if you get them during the pre-order um, but it is a little bit less than the 50 dollars they charge for the standard figures so you will be saving at least a little bit just not as much as if you had you know jumped onto those pre-orders and bought them early so a lot of cool stuff there that's what i would encourage you to do grab some legion builders compare them to regular figures look at the details once you start working with these figures more and more you start getting used to the body parts because they use that that limited parts library you're going to get used to that torso and used to these arms and these legs and where the details are and how to paint those details and that all starts by picking these figures up and just experimenting and starting to customize Hopefully you enjoyed this video and all the videos like this that I post. If you do like the video, let me know in the comments. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe so you'll be notified when videos just like this go live. If you do decide to follow any of these steps and make some creations for yourself, be sure to post them, tag me so I can see them because I can't wait to see what you make.